Shalom, shalom. Peace be upon all of you sincere laborers. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises, honor, glory, and worship to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah, Bahashim Ucha Kodash, Yahweh being the only true name of the Heavenly Father whom the world calls God. Yahweh Shah being the only and true name of the only begotten Son, all right, whom the world calls Christ and Jesus. All right, of course, double honors to the elders and the apostles that have well and do well overseeing the tabernacle of David, starting from prophet Abba Bivens on down to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Greetings and salutations to you, Akim which are you brothers, uh, that the Christians were in truth and sincerity. All right. This is your servant, your brother, Yaikwab out of Great Millstone, Atlanta, with once again another lesson of exhortation and edification to feed the lamb of Yah Bashim All right. This is a Hebrew edification. All right. And, um, uh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get uh, illustrative with um, this one more so with um, images, which should be um, you know exciting to a certain extent for brothers who uh, who are interested and in, you know who are fond of stones because this is gonna be oriented around the priest breastplate, the high the high priest breastplate. Okay, that was um, established during the time of Leviticus, all right? During the time after we left Egypt, all right? So um, let's, uh, let's get it into English. We're gonna do, this is Exodus, the 28th chapter, the 17th through the 20th verse. So we're gonna get it in English and then, um, we're going to uh, we're going to touch up on it in the Hebrew. All right, so right here, let's see here. So this is Exodus chapter twenty-eight, verse seventeen. It says, "And thou shall sit in the it's like him." Exodus chapter twenty-eight, verse seventeen. And thou shall sit in it settings of stones, even four rows. Of stones, the first row shall be a sardius, a topaz, and a carbuncle. This shall be the first row. All right. Now, uh, before uh, I get it in Hebrew, I just wanted to give you an illustration because I have some of these stones in my possession. So that first stone being a sardius, which that was more so the ancient terminology for um, now it will be considered a carnelian stone. And this right here, as you can see, I'm trying to put in the light. This is a carnelian stone. All right. This is the Sardia stone, which is the stone for the tribe of Reuben, the firstborn. Now, the, the, um, the stones are in order of how we were born. The order of the the patriarch's birth. All right. So the second, and I actually have, you know, let me grab that. The second is a topaz, which is for who? Simeon. All right. Who is the second born? And the third is what? My tribe, which is Loya. All right. Which is um, carbon glue. All right. And that's the first row. All right, and all of these stones have specific powers and, and different vibrations attached to it. All right, and they actually coincide with the spirit of, of each tribe. If you go into, I'm not going to do it for time's sake, but if you go into like what the Sardius stone is supposed to do, it is the spirit of that stone and the vibration of that stone coincides with the spirit and vibration of Reuben. Okay? And for all of these stones, that's how it works, you know. The Lord is not vain like fellows in the world. He does everything mathematically. 
everything. That's why, as the scripture says, precept upon precept. The Lord is a master architect. All right, there's nothing done in vain from the old throughout to the new. All right. Okay. So, um, all right, so let's get into Hebrew. All right. So, it says, Wa malath, ba wa malath, aban arabaya tawaryam, aban tawar adam, patada wa barakwath ha tawar ha akhad. All right. So, wa malath and set malath meaning set bawa in it malath setting aban stone arabaya for or it also could be arabi or excuse me arabai you know the but you know this is for uh tawarium, which is rose coming from the root word tawar uh aban stones which in this context it would be dealing with it in plural now it's not you know you wouldn't say you wouldn't write it out with a yum or a wath but in given the context of what is because you have right here the four shows that this would be plural that's basically what i'm saying so it says tawaro aban excuse me adam adam which is the hebrew word for the start the start of the stone or the carnelian stone and adam which means ruddy or red and a lot of the stones get their name from their color and if you see, if I put it up to the light, this gets its color. All right, it's, it's basically ruddy, a ruddy, a red. It's a dark red. All right. It says patada, which is topaz, um, wabarakwath which is carbuncle, or another term for is um, uh, the modern terminology that you would probably use is almadine garnet, which is an almadine garnet stone. All right. It says, ha tawar, the row, ha achad, the first, or one. So that's row one. That's the first row. Now, let's go to the next verse. Verse 18, Exodus chapter 28, verse 18. And the second row shall be an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. Okay? And uh, let me see, do I? I have none of those stones yet. Um, now, sapphire is actually my favorite stone on the planet. Matter of fact, Shalakia, like have this right here. For us. So we see here an emerald. This is how an emerald will look, which is representation of the tribe of Yahweh or Judah. All right, the sapphire, which is Yashasha, excuse me, Yashashakar. All right, it's the stone for the so called Mexicans. And the diamond, which is uh, um, Zabal, excuse me, Zabal, it's like you always have trouble saying Zebulon's name in Hebrew. Uh, Zabawalun, kind of a tongue twister. Zabawalun, all right, which is a diamond, all right. Now, each, like, as you can see here, each stone on the high priest's breastplate is a representation of the 12 tribes of Israel in the perspective stone for the perspective um, tribe, all right. So we have the second row. Well, let's. Let's actually go into the Hebrew. Let's go into the Hebrew. 
a veces wahat waha shanya napak sapayar wa yahlam wahat wa in waha the the wa ro ha the shanya second napak which means emerald in hebrew um sapayar which it means sapphire um wa yahlam which yahlam means diamond and diamond okay now um let's get a uh, let's get this next verse let's get this next verse this is Exodus chapter 28 verse 19 in the third row excuse me in the third row a ligger an agate and an amethyst. All right. Now, I do not have a ligger, but that is, if I'm not mistaken, for the tribe of Naphtali, Naphtalia, right here, which you see this red stone. That's a ligger. An agate, which is for the tribe of Gad, and I actually have an agate on me right here. So my neck, Shalakia. It's also an agate stone. All right, so this is how it would look. All right, agate, and then you have amethyst. All right, and right here is an am. This is actually my second favorite stone. Right here, you have an amethyst stone. This is how amethyst would look. It is so beautiful. All right, and these stones carry energies and different medicinal properties. All right, just like stones, different metals, so on and so forth. All right. Um, that's where you get the Urim and Thum actually from, which is in the Hebrew, uh, uh, Awarium and Thamium, which is perfection of light. The stones on the high priest's breastplate was actually an energy conductor for the Urim and Thum. All right. So these stones you know, are very powerful, especially when coinciding together and you active, they can be activated, you know? Of course, you know, through the spirit, you know, and, you know, through the Levitical line, but, you know, of course, through the spirit, we're come, we've come to a time where we all are priests through Yahweh Shai, all right? We are all priests and we are all able to be kings through Yahweh Shah. Okay? So, um, let's see here. You know that thing was bad, man. Like an actual breastplate, psh, you know that thing was bad. You know? So, um, where were we? I believe. I actually got to get the Hebrew. Um, verse 19, it says, Wahatawar ha shalayashya la sham shabau wa achlamma. All right, which is Wahatawar in the row ha shalayashya. The third, Shalayashya means third. Um, Lasham meaning ligger. All right. Um, Shabao meaning agate would be agate in the Hebrew. And Wa Achlama, Achlama meaning amethyst. Achlama means amethyst. All right. Okay. So, um, Let's see here. Let's see here. Let's go to um, the next verse. All right, this is, um, we're almost done. This is the last verse. Verse 20, it says, this is Exodus chapter 28, verse 20. In the fourth row, a barrel and an onyx and a jasper. They shall be set in gold in their enclosing. 
Mm. I can you can only imagine how beautiful that thing looked, you know, and the energy that was being conducted within that, that breastplate. That breastplate would charge you up just by being in the in its presence, man. <laughs> Let alone putting it on, burn the incense in the in the sweet savor of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Oh man. You know. But um yeah, you know. Let's uh let's get the um illustration. Alright, so we have a barrel, which is a representation of the tribe of um Manessa, Manasha. Alright. You have the onyx stone, which is a representation of the tribe of Aparium or the tribe of Ephraim. And last but definitely not least, you have little Benjamin. You have the Jasper Stone, which is a representation of Banyaman. All right. Okay. So um, let's get to the Hebrew. All right. This is verse 20. It says, um, Mashabatazayam. Matter of fact, yeah, kind. It's like, yeah, it start up here. It says, Wa hatawar ha rabiaya tharash yash wa shaham wa yashapa masha batazayam zahab. Ya ya haya wa ba mala wa ath slakia ba mala wa ath thayam. Matter of fact, oh, let me see here. Let me make sure I wrote that down correctly. Let me go back to the blue letter. Because I think that ya might not supposed to be there. I could be mistaken. Yeah, that ya is actually not supposed to be there. Shalakia. So instead of, so right here is just supposed to be thumb. All right. So that ya is actually wasn't supposed to be there. So it's ba mala wa a thumb or ba mala wa ba mala wa a ma. You know, you can say thumb. Me, I would say thumb, you know. All right, so uh, because that actually represents the there, that ma, you know. But uh, let's let's break it down in entirety. So it says wa ha tawar, um, and in the row ha rabaya fourth the fourth row tharash uh, yash. Which is barrel, all right. The Rashiash means barrel. Washaham, which means onyx. Shaham means onyx stone or onyx. Wa yashapa, meaning jasper. All right. Mashabatazayam, coming from the root word. Ma, excuse me, from coming from the root word. Root word. Shabbatza, which means um, plat, all right, or sit, like you know, you if you plat something on a, on the wall, all right. So ma shab, excuse me, ma shabbatzayam, so platted, all right. Zahab, gold. Zaha means gold. Yaha Yawa, coming from the word uh, Hawa or Haya Haya, which basically mean be. This is the future tense. Shall be. Ba malawa atham, in in their setting or in their enclosing. So the stones are going to basically be, basically be 
plaited within the gold and then closes with the gold. That's basically what they're saying. All right. So, yeah, that's um, the breakdown. And here you have the vocabulary written in the Aramaic or the Assyrian text to familiarize brothers or, you know, just to, for balance sake, edification, because, you know, when you when you go to these different sources, they're not written in the Paleo-Hebrew, they're written in the Aramaic, you know, so it, it is important to know the Aramaic, all right? So we have Mala'ah, these are the root words of anything that might have been conjugated in the uh, above, so you have Mala'ah, meaning set, feel, Mala'ah, mala excuse me, Mala'ah, meaning setting, dealing with jewel, Aban, stone, Arabai, meaning four, that's the number four, Tawar, meaning row, Adam, meaning Sardius, or Carnelian, red, rudy, Patada, meaning topaz, Barquath, meaning carbuncle, or, or Almadine garnet, Achad, meaning one or first, Shanya, meaning two or second, Napak, meaning emerald, Sapayar, meaning sapphire, Yahlam, meaning diamond, Shalayashya, meaning three or third, Lasham, meaning lig um, ligger, uh, Shabao, meaning agate, Achlama, meaning amethyst, So we have um, uh, Rabbi Aya, meaning fourth. Tarash Yash, meaning barrel, or the uh, terminology that might be used now is a uh, uh, chrysolite. Okay, Shaham, meaning onyx. Uh, Yashapa, meaning jasper. Shabbatza meaning weave or plait. Zaha meaning gold. So that's it, Akim. That is the Hebrew edification. Lord willing, this was edifying through the spirit. And we're about to get all this glory back. The jewels, the stones, the riches, the wealth, the preeminence, all that's going to be given back to us very soon, man. As soon as our Lord and Savior, Yahweh, shall redeem us. So give all praises unto Yahweh Shemiah Shalom.